All right, lesson two on scripts. Let's build on scripts to actually make them uh, do what they're intended to do, which is make your programs more efficient, easier to read, and better to code. What we're going to do here is we're just taking a look at one of the scripts from the first lesson, which was damaged player. Now you'll see here damaged player. I took off five hit points, checked if they were low, and you know possibly ended the game. Now, of course, in your games, not everything is going to cause five hit points damage. Now what scripts actually let you do is scripts actually let you send in information into the script when it runs. So let's give you a little example here by modifying the damage player script you made before to make it way more useful. So here we go. Now the player gets damaged when they get hit by a laser or by rock. So I'm just going to start with the hit by laser. Instead of taking five off, when a laser hits the player, I want to take like 20 off. So I'm going to go in here, and you're going to see here, damage player is just empty between these brackets. Now what you can do in these brackets, if you want, is you can send something called a parameter or an argument. Now what this is, is this is extra information that the script needs to use when it runs. So you'll see here our damage player before always took 5 off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it the number 20 when it's run. It's a lot like this method up here. This thing here is basically a script. And when I create an effect, I send it some information. I say, hey, I want you to make a ring. I tell you where I want to make it, the size of it, and the color of it. Same thing here. I'm going to run damage player, and I'm going to give it how much damage I want it to take off the player. And this thing is called an argument or a parameter. Now, you don't have to write that in there, but that's just what it's called. Now, how do you actually handle this over on the script? So let's pop to the script. Now that we're sending in an argument, what I do here is I can do this. I can say that I'm sending in some information. I'll just put as one word here. I'm sending in how much damage should come off the script. Now I'm not going to take five off the life of the player anymore. Instead, I'm going to take argument zero life off of the player. When you send these numbers in, what Game Maker does is it numbers the arguments. Now I'm only sending in one argument. That argument is known, and it's already pre-named for you, as argument zero. Almost every other computer language would let you choose the name of your arguments yourself, but Game Maker is sort of locked into this way where you don't really have any choice. The first parameter you send is going to be called argument zero. If we sent two parameters in, the next one will be called argument one. The next one will be called argument two, argument three, and it just goes on and on and on. But it's important to remember that the counting does start at zero. So in our example, we gave it the number 20, argument 0 is the number 20. So this literally reads hit points is hit points minus 20. And then it runs the code. Now the nice thing is, is that when the player gets hit by a rock, I only wanted to do 5 damage. Well now that I'm using arguments, I do have to put the 5 in there because it needs that argument 0 to run the code. So damage player 5 jumps to the script. Argument 0 is the number 5, so hit points equals hit points minus 5. This is great now because this one script that we had before now takes in argument 0. How much damage to do? And it's nice to document it just like that so people know what the arguments are going to represent okay, and what they mean. And so, nice and easy to read. Some people even do this in their code. It's not necessary, but you could do this. You could say damage equals argument zero. And then you say hit points equals hit points minus damage. Now, for a short little example like this, that's probably not necessary. If you were going to be doing a lot of code using argument zero, you might not want to keep typing argument zero. You might want to just use, you know, 
the word damage because it'll look nicer and read easier in your code. So it's sort of up to you, you know, whether you want to do that or not. Okay, but that's an example of using arguments. Let's take a look at another one we could do using a script that takes in a bunch of parameters. I'm going to make a whole new script here. This one's going to be called, and this one's just for fun, I'm going to call it make shrapnel. So this is like something hits a wall, an explosion, and I want little pieces of things to fly off. So I'm going to call this make shrapnel, and I'll just do my documentation here really quickly. And there we go, what I typed. So see here, like a good documentation here, what I've done is I've just said the name of the method. And this one's going to take three arguments in, in order for it to run. It's going to send a bunch of shrapnel pieces flying off in different directions. What the heck are these arguments up here? Well, you say argument zero, how many pieces to make. Argument one, the minimum speed of the shrapnel. And argument two, the maximum speed of the shrapnel. Now I'm going to quickly write the code here for you. And here's the code to make my shrapnel here. Maybe a new command for you. Repeat just means repeat whatever code you put between the curly braces. And how many times you want it to repeat? Argument zero. So if I send it 10, it'll repeat this code 10 times. Now what exactly is it repeating? I'm making a piece of shrapnel. I'm setting its speed to a random value between argument one and argument two. Those were the two numbers up here that I passed in to the script. And so you can see here if I go 3 comma 12, the pieces are going to get their speed set to between 3 and 12. The direction's just random and the image angle I set it to match whatever direction they were given so it looks right. Now let's actually use this method called make shrapnel and let's do it when an arrow hits one of the ghosts. So let's say ghosts hit by arrow. So I do all these other things. I destroy the arrow. I make my things. I give the player points. Let's also just throw in here now. Make shrapnel. And let's make a lot of them so the effect's obvious. So let's make 15 of them. Minimum speed 2. Maximum speed 4. Ah, let's just do 5. And now let's actually hit a ghost and see this method work. And there's our little shrapnel right when the ghost gets hit. Oh, and unfortunately I ran out of life. But you can see it is working. And there's my awesome game over screen. Now, you'll see that works and why it's sort of nice is anytime in your game here, if you don't want as much shrapnel, you can just change that somewhere else to 3 if you wanted. If you want pieces to go flying really fast, you could change it to 12 to 12, or you could say 12 to 15. You know, you can do whatever you want here. This chunk of code has been written very general in a script, and now you can make it flexible by just changing what arguments or parameters you pass in when you call the script. And so that's another good benefit about scripts is that once you've made them, if you make them correctly, this code can be reused different parts of your game if you wanted. You could even make it so one of the arguments, if you wanted, was what object are you making? So if I wanted to, I could add a third argument and say create x, y, argument 3. And you could even tell it what kind of shrapnel. You know, there's sort of no limit to how many arguments you could pass in. The more arguments, sometimes the better, because then the person can use the method in lots of different ways. So that's sort of the basics on scripts that take in arguments, right, and how to use them in your game and how they can make it efficient. Go practice a few in the next challenge, and we'll see you in the next video.